And for our next presentation, it's by Giancarlo Coro, talking to AI open science in blue growth, culture, habitats, ecological niche modeling, and fish identification. Hello everyone, I'm Giancarlo Coro, researcher at CNR Italy. I'm a physicist and I'm currently involved in a number of EU projects. My research topics range from computational biology to NLP using artificial intelligence and open science methodologies. This presentation will explain the support that artificial intelligence and the open science paradigm can give to the EU long-term strategy for the sustainable growth of the marine and maritime sectors, that is blue growth. So first, let me clarify what is commonly meant for big data. That is a fundamental concept in modern AI applications. Big data are data streams characterized by a large volume, a high generation velocity, a large variety, unreliable content, and heterogeneous descriptions. These data require unconventional computer science systems to be properly managed and to extract valuable information from them. Some examples in marine science are vessel transmitted data, climatic parameters, and species observations. In the last decade, new science paradigms are born to manage big data while supporting large computations and collaborative experimentation. These paradigms include open science, e-science, and science 2.0, whose definitions are rapidly converging towards the same definition because overall they guarantee the three R's of science, that is reproducibility, repeatability, and reusability of data in processes and the transparency of the scientific methodology. Aside from this concept, AI has applications on big data in several branches of science. An AI system is any system that executes tasks that can be perceived as intelligent. It can either emulate what happens inside a biological system or simulate its input and output. AI is by definition multidisciplinary and requires collaboration between experts. E-infrastructures are platforms that manage both AI and open science requirements in the context of big data processing. They have been largely supported by the EU Commission in the last decades. E-infrastructures are networks of hardware and software resources that support collaborative and data-intensive science. They also support the creation of virtual research environments that foster data sharing and collaborative experimentation while guaranteeing the transparency and repeatability of the workflows. One example of e-infrastructure is D4Science, a CNR platform that hosts virtual research environments for many application domains ranging from taxonomic studies to geothermal analysis and cultural heritage, all dealing with AI and big data management. All this technology is supporting the blue growth strategy through the generation of new knowledge from big data, the reusability of data and methodologies across domains, the transparency of the workflows because it is possible to verify and repeat experiments, and the overall guarantee of longevity to data and processes. In the next slides, I will rapidly show questions that have been answered through AI methodologies based on collaborative infrastructures that use open science approaches. The first question is, why a species is in a certain place? This question has been answered through ecological niche models that have combined multiple AI models with big data of environmental parameters and species observations to produce uniform distributions of habitat suitability scores. In the slide, you can find a link to access the habitat distributions of over 60,000 marine species hosted on the D4Science infrastructure. By combining ecological niche models with cluster analysis, we can discover patterns of habitat change due to climate change. And the answer to the question, how does climate change affect species habitat change? If we add environmental parameter and AI model forecasting, we can predict future expansions of invasive species, 
In this slide, for example, you can see the prediction of the invasion of the Mediterranean Sea by the silver-cheeked toadfish, which was analyzed through an ensemble of seven AI models that worked on future forecasts of the environmental parameters under different greenhouse gases emission scenarios. So where is open science? It is behind the scenes, because every step of an experiment has a link associated that allows to exactly repeat one experimental step or modify the parameters and re-execute that step. Additionally, all links correspond to a web services described under a representation standard, which allows for fast reapplication to new data. Other experiments worth to mention include the 3D reconstruction of underwater environments to study, for example, coral biomass change in time, based on the photos uploaded by a group of scuba divers or the use of AI collaborative platforms to build systems that will later run on board of edge computing systems. The case reported in this slide is the UDMOS device, developed in collaboration with FAO, that uses an array of cameras to record videos of large fishes passing in front of one of the cameras. This system uses a combination of AI and visual computing approaches that were first collaboratively developed and tested on an infrastructure and were later deployed on an unbated underwater device. In conclusion, Blue Growth is benefiting from AI and AI itself is gaining more and more importance in the decision making processes. When combined with open science, AI can enhance knowledge discovery and process big data with a transparent approach. Transparency is indeed crucial to communicate with the decision makers. So this concludes my presentation. Sorry for these technical issues. Um, I, I try to be fast. And then uh, if you have questions. Thank you, Jean Paul. I think you did exceptionally well, considering you weren't planning for that. So thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, Jean Paul. Excellent. Uh, I, I might turn over to Matt because I know Matt has worked with you, and there's there's actually so many areas which you've worked across. But one of those was in trying to get cameras to collect over long periods, but only select the imagery that was needed and that allowed you to somehow make decisions within the camera rather than when you got home and had run out of battery. So maybe Matt's got a question to leave with. Thank you. Um, I, I, I can do, Kim, but I mean, it's a bit uh, it's a bit vain for me to ask a question about my own work. Um, um, yeah, I think something that um, you spoke to me about, Gianpaolo, I mean, the, that, the, the work on Udemos is available um, for everyone to, to read, but I think something that's really important that you spoke to me about a couple of months ago was um, the idea about how old um, algorithms are in, in AI and, um, and how we need to work on more specific algorithms to tackle issues such as identification of fish. Um, I don't know if you remember that conversation. I hope so. I found what you said very interesting about the age of the, some of the technology and the maths that we're using uh, currently. I found that extremely interesting. I don't think uh, that was necessarily a question, but Gianpaolo, uh, I think Matt was asking you to repeat some of the stories about the understanding of how, ah, how far back this kind of thinking goes to developing algorithms, which today are in the news, but you know, five years ago, you mentioned the word algorithm, no one knew what you were talking about, or very few people knew. And yes. uh, Matt was saying you had conversations and you've done some reading about the age of the mathematics which have built these types of systems. Maybe you could share some of those stories. <laughs> yes, well, it's a complex uh, question to answer. Uh, because uh, yes, we, we are uh, now we are now at the edge of technology uh, for some applications like the one 
of uh, ambient remote devices because uh, well, originally uh, we wanted to to produce and to, to make a scalable solution also in, term, in terms of costs because yeah, yes it is always possible to 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 throw a big computer uh, underwater but uh, then you have to care about uh, batteries, the number of uh, of devices that you want to 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 buy or uh, to propose, uh, and, and also the, the the computational capacity of the device that you that you are working on. So we are currently at the edge of this type of technology, and, and so well uh, from one month to the other. Uh, every, everything can change. Also, the, the, the kind of models that are um, currently produced uh, in the AI research uh, is not really parallel to uh, hardware and also costs um, requests. So I don't, I don't know if I was clear with uh, with this um, <clears throat> with this explanation on on the issues, but there are not only um, AI problems, but the fact that uh, if you want to really uh, downscale to practical uh, difficulties and also to low costs, uh, you, you have to find other ways. And one way is to open up the black box of the AI models and to uh, modify something inside. Uh, so to, to try to, and this can be done by uh, taking inspiration from uh, uh, what happens in some biological systems. So uh, in doing this scaling now, let me say that we are going uh, backwards in some way from AI to cybernetics, uh, where uh, you had to emulate in some parts, some parts of a biological system to find uh, efficient solutions and ways to solve the problems. And uh, to do this, it is absolutely crucial to, uh, to work within a um, multi-competence, um, uh, multi let's say multidisciplinary context. So to have collaborative tools that support uh, conversation between a biologist and a physicist and mathematical, uh, mathematician and uh, uh, other people that may come with uh, solutions from uh, an also even unexpected uh, domains. So I hope I was, <laughs> so this strange explanation of mine was, uh, uh, well, was yeah, clear no, for you. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, it was uh, exactly what I was referring to, John Power. I think that um, this sort of scenario um, and I didn't realize we were doing it, kind of unpicks AI back to cybernetics, doesn't it? Like you, like you said. And uh, I think sometimes it's to try and uh, break beyond outside the box, like you're saying, you need to be a reflective and multidisciplinary and, uh, and to produce something that, that, that um, is, is capable of doing something cutting edge and, and that sort of collaboration and collaborative thinking assists that process, doesn't it? which really echoes what um, the, the objectives of the whole forum are about, really, uh, bringing people together and, and trying yeah. to help everybody and everything yes. within a yeah. system. Yeah. Yeah. These, are, yes, these are not problems that uh, uh, one group of people having the same expertise can solve or one person can solve. 